welcome back all of you nana here and then uh, we are into the next day's uh, program of this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation and then uh, we have completed the pr cpa spo as well as the pr bpa spo fine now the next topic on this is what we are going to see a touchless buying touchless buying is not there in ebus fine it is a new concept which has been introduced in fusion actually so now begin the touchless buying <sighs> So if you go there, and then let me go to procurement now. Go to the procurement, and then I go to the purchase orders. And then if you are in this form, then always add it to the favorite so that whatever it will be easy for you to come over here very frequently actually. So I am opening the purchase orders. <clears throat> so let me add it to the favorites <clears throat> so that whatever you know come over here very frequently. Somebody has changed the layout. Actually, this is the layout which the Hacharamas team always likes, and so they would like to have this layout actually in this place. <coughs> so I will now go to the favorites. So I click on the favorites. So click on the favorites. I will now add this to the favorites. So I add the favorites. <coughs> right to the overview. I click on from P O overview. close so that it will be there. Actually, the P O overview will be there on the top. So click on it. We'll now go to the what? I will now go to the manage agreements. I click on the manage agreements and have a look at it. So we have created one. We created one CPA and then one BPA. Both the agreements will be shown over here now. So this is the BPA and then this is the BPA. So we'll now open up the BPA file and then see what are the item which they have we have used actually in this place. So go down. So we have used the other data picture. <coughs> Fine. We have used the other data. So let me use a desktop for automation. Actually, fine. Desktop is not there at all. Fine. We don't have any BPA for the desktop. Fine. So if you have a BPA for the desktop, the system will be creating it automatically. Actually. So I will now create what happens here. PO without a BPA. Actually. If there is no BPA, how to do it? Fine. How to automate the purchases? Actually. And go that one. So the first activity is what we have to go there. Fine. I will now right click and then duplicate. First activity is what you go there. Go to the configure procurement business function. Go to the setup and maintenance. And then you go to the configure procurement business function. Click on. And then you go to the search. Configure procurement business function. The configure procurement business function is the one. And you go there. And then drop down, I will not choose maybe you. So click on OK. <clears throat> so the one. So here, uh, when you want to make a touchless buying, you must have the buyer uh, either on the item level or on the manage buyer assignments level or on the configure procurement business function level. So in one of the levels, you must have the buyer, first of all, and then go down. And then in the bottom, what happens, you make auto-generate orders from requester negotiated requestation lines. Fine, this is your delivery. So here, the requester himself can negotiate the price. So, okay, fine. So the requester himself can negotiate the price. So that means what? There is no need for the purchase officer at all. You can bypass the purchasing department. So if the company allows the requester to directly talk to the supplier, and then what happens is create this, then it is very much possible to convert it automatically. So auto generate. This is the requirement, and then this is the requirement. Fine. These are the two requirements on the configure procurement this function. See when close. Nana? No. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Is this function usually uh, applied to the approved suppliers? Uh, suppliers or is any supplier? Any supplier. It doesn't mean that it does. Approved supplier uh, is not there in procurement at all. Fine. We don't have any oh. such approved supplier concept in procurement. Approved supplier concept is there only in planning center. Right. The, the concept has been removed from uh, procurement. Actually. Procurement no more uses the approved supplier list. Fine. In EBIS, we have the approved supplier list, and then we don't have anything. We don't have a sourcing rules. We have the approved supply list. Those things are not available here in the procurement. So pro, uh, the approved supplier list is used only by order, uh, only by the planning center. For the demand supply balancing, they'll be using the approved supply list, not bias. 
procurement do not have. So click on that. <clears throat> now we go there. We long go to the home icon. Go to the home icon. You long go to the home icon, and then here I will long go to the procurement, and then I go to the purchase requisitions. Click on the purchase requisitions. I'm not going to go to the purchase requisition section. This also I can add to the favorites, not my main favorites. And then go to add to favorites. <clears throat> I will not say uh, shop. Shop is okay. Thank you. Shop is nothing but a PR. So we are now come to this place. Fine. Go that to find. Now enter the requisition lines for us. Now go to enter requisition lines. And then now enter. It. So I will now use the desktop. T zero two two. I think. B022 is a desktop. But for desktop, we don't have any BP at all. So you go there, and then now the requester is negotiating the price actually. So the requester is now negotiating the price with the supplier actually. <clears throat> the source of negotiation. I don't know how to make it as a supplier. Right? Somebody make our and tell us. So now he wants, let us say, three quantities. Now supplier is quoting for ten dollars. He is now going to discuss with a particular supplier. Now say T zero two sub one. So with this supplier, he is now discussing it, and then he is now negotiating a price of nine nine fifty actually. So nine fifty is now negotiated. So after having negotiated, he is going to put a tick mark as negotiated. That means what? He himself has uh, talked to the supplier and then negotiated. Now the system will now automatically create a feedback. Fine. In the configure business function, if you have the buyer as well as auto generate. If those tick mark are available, then the system will be automatically creating a P. And this is called touchless buying. The purchasing department is not touching this requisition mm -hmm. at all. Negotiator is putting it. So he has negotiated the price, and so there is no but nobody else intervention is required. This is the requirement which has come in, and so what happens? Oracle has introduced this uh, touchless buying in Krishna. So click on add to cart. No, no, here uh, <clears throat> the requester and buyer can be different, right? They are naturally different. Okay, and requester will not be never be a buyer at all. No, no. Yeah, actually, we okay. We logged in with this. That's why. Ah, yeah. no. We are given all the powers to this. Powers to this guy. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. And the reason that since we are given all the roles to this guy, so okay. he himself is a requester. He himself is a buyer. In reality, okay. no be. Yeah. Requester okay. will be separate, and then buyer will be separate. Yeah. So we are given the advanced procurement requester role as well as the procurement role, procurement manager role also to the same guy. Correct. Correct. Okay. But a buyer will be a requester, but requester will not be a buyer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because buyer sometimes have to create a requisition in the system. So yes. you now make the buyer as a requester, but not the requester will never be a buyer at all. Because he is not working on the department. So now go that to okay. on the review it. So we are going to review it. Now we are going to see the actual thing. As soon as it gets approved, it will be automatically be creating a purchase order. In the meantime, what happens? I will now go there. I will now right click and then have a look at it. Or here in the here itself, you can see this. So click on the manage approvals and then have a look at it. Whether anybody has modified the approvals or not. So this is a negotiated price actually. Fine. I don't know whether the negotiated tick mark will be coming here or not. Right click and then duplicate and uh, multiple tab begins way. So we'll now have a look at it and then we'll submit for it. 1008, I'm going to submit for approval actually. So we are now creating what a requisition for desktop for which we don't have any BP at all. <clears throat> but then once when it is created, what happens it will become here.
they have to click on it. So the approval, oh God, somebody has fitted the rules. So the biggest problem is what everybody works on it and then so it becomes very difficult actually. Okay, we'll make it as automatic and click on setup and then we'll make it as automatic. Click on it. Along the search. <clears throat> Manage. So manage requisition approvals if somebody has modified it. So somebody has brought the consensus over here. If I click on any tools, <laughs> there may be so many rules there now. The so many are there. Fine, that is now firing actually. So let me take the three, third one. Fine, it may be automatic actually. I don't know how people are working on so many things. Fine, the only one is enabled fine, is automatic actually. So let me uh, enable this now. Fine, the hierarchy three. Let me enable it, and then that one I will not disable it. There you see, so many rules are there. And people are testing on it actually. It is able to they go to the shop recommendation. So I'm not able to go there. I will not click on manage approval. This time it has to show me the developer has to approve. So 1008 will be approved by the application developer actually. So when I made this is enabled. So application developer is and click on that. So once when this is approved, you can now see the PO is now getting created automatically. Actually. And then I will now go there, click on manage purchase order approval. Also, now have a look at my manage document approval. Let's modify it down. The system will be creating a automatically a purchase order. The one we are using now, I click on edit tools and then have a look at it. And the one, oh God, somebody's BO is there. <laughs> Oh God. So that will be getting held, held up now. Fine. So we used this one now. Fine. This one I used it. I don't know what exactly I used. It. So you must have one automatic actually. Fine. Now that is for his BU actually. Fine. It becomes very difficult to us control people actually. Always have a habit of what happens. Putting your rules over there. And then I go to add actions and then I will make it like And I always tell people that do not test it on purchase orders because if you're tested on requisitions, that is more than sufficient to find the uploads. But people will go and test each and everything. Now. The flow will be getting affected when you're testing it. The same concept is there on requisitions and PO. Do not test anything at all here. If I enable it, I will not disable that. Go that click on it. I will not disable it. Go there. <clears throat> so the requisition 1008 is now submitted. Fine. So it's not coming. So it's no one now. So we'll now have a look at the requisition. Fine. Pending approval is coming. And we'll have to log out approval. 1008 approval. So it's approved now. Fine. You can now see the buy. The automatic is now automatically on. Now. Fine. For the desktop, you can see the line is being processed by the buyer. The buyer, which has been mentioned on your configure requisitioning business function. Buyer may be available on configure requisition business function or manage your uh, assignments. Now, fine, your uh, buyer assignment rules or otherwise on item. Fine, somewhere the buyer is there. So, that buyer item is the top level, and then uh, manage buyer assignments is the next level, and then the least level is configure procurement business function. From there, it will now pick up the buyer. So, accordingly, what happened? The order will be getting created. Actually. So, I'm done. I click on the now, fine. Come on up it. And then again, go there and then see this now, fine. You cannot find the order coming up over here. But order is not coming because what happens? Uh, uh, that is, that is now had to go for, for an approval actually. And that is the reason that it is not coming. I right click and then duplicate now. So let us now go on and look at the order. The uh, automatic order is not there actually. And go to the purchase orders and then query for the requisition number one thousand eight now. Click on it. And go to the manage orders and then I know query one thousand eight will be on a unapproved status. So is an incomplete status mainly because what happens uh, somebody has modified it. Now I will not submit for approval actually. Otherwise, it would have got approved. And since uh, automatic approval is not there, <clears throat> so it's an incomplete status because our view is not there at all and actions on the edit. 
there is no approval rule for our B actually, and so it is now got blank and then they now got shut actually in this place. So 2004 is the order number now. So 1008. And then the source agreement of a CPA is coming. Fine. CPA is a generic agreement. Fine. So it will now bring in the terms and conditions of the 3000 actually. The terms and conditions will be brought from the 3000 actually. I will not submit. <coughs> but for automation, you need the prices to be negotiated. Since the prices are already negotiated, you cannot see the price as 950. The price of 950. This is called touchless buying actually. Did we add that uh, agreement on the requisition line? It will come automatically. Fine. In EBUS, we have to add it manually. Yeah. Fine. So now there is a problem now, fine, because of uh, 3000 is now giving a problem. Fine. Uh, it must be for a minimum of $50. $50, yes. So that's why it's not there. Okay. So, so this completes the touchless buying. It. <coughs> Let me go there and then disable this 3000 now. Because this is not going to cause a problem everywhere now. <coughs> Let me put in the 3000 and then disable it. Any doubts on the touchless buying? Fine. If you go to the manager agreements, you can put in the 3000. So that I do not want this to come into picture for everywhere. So go that click on it. And then I will now put an end date also, otherwise, what happens actually read, and then I will now enhance the uh, what happens the limit now. Now, yeah, change order is now getting created actually. It will now go for approval for the change order also. Now go for the change order approval also. I know the agreement amount is what? So many things have been done now. So go there. So click on submit. And 3000 has been enhanced now. Right? So, so much of a money can be released actually. Agreement, uh, I mean, agreement amount is there now. Right? Uh, so uh, the agreement amount uh, gets copied into uh, what happens? Uh, agreement limit actually. Fine. Amount limit is there. Fine. It gets operated, but it is not coming. Up. Fine. I will not enhance it. This is the one which is going to control all the things. So amount limit is the one. So all the cumulative releases has to be should be what happens? Uh, should be less than you click on submit. And in this place, what happens? The manufacturing document of course. Fine. We have only one now. Fine. So we don't have anything. So we don't have any, what happens, the change order approvals and so what happens, it will be getting approved. The contract person will be getting approved. So the touchless buying is now complete. The next topic is what? Retroactive pricing. So we will now create the second topic. The next topic is what? Retroactive pricing. We will go there. We will now create an agreement. Okay, we'll create an agreement. So the desktop has been created. I will now create a, a what happens this for a blanket purchase agreement for a, a laptop. So supply is a T02. Let me create a what happens a BPA for a laptop. So click on create. <clears throat> Go down. So I will now agree an amount. I will now go there. I will now add the line. So the supplier is now going to what happens? The, the purchase officer is going to negotiate the price also. Easy to do. I will now do the laptop. So the price comes as 10. Now he has uh, negotiated a price of let us say uh, 9. 9 is the price. Deep. He has not ended it. So here we will now go there. The remaining will not bother about that. It's okay. I'm not giving any MR no fine. So I will now put a big amount. So the big amount, agreement amount, amount is coming. So I will now go to the controls. So I will now, you know, first of all, what happens is this must be a non-cumulative one. Fine. If it is a cumulative one, the retroactive pricing will not work at all. click on it. So the price break must be non-cumulative. Only for a non-cumulative, the retroactive price will work. Otherwise, it will not work at all. But I will now make it as a non-cumulative. The price break must be non cumulative Allow price override is a lab excess. If you do it, what happens on a PO, we can even override the price. Otherwise, what happens will not allow you to override the price. That is the lab excess. So go that one. So it must be non cumulative for the retroactive pricing to work. Actually. It is true in EBS also. Same thing. They're not done. So I have not done it. Non cumulative is not done. So the controls normally will not enable everything. Enable. And then the retroactive enabled retroactive pricing is there. 
reprice open orders only and then communicate price updates now right? reprice open orders means if, uh, if a particular purchase order is closed it will not reprice at all whereas it is not so if you remove it even the closed orders will be reprice that fine let us say yep i item has been received and then it is not closed for receiving so we can even reprice the closed orders also <clears throat> So communicate price updates is that fine. Initiate process upon agreement approval. Fine. So we can even initiate this one. upon agreement approval. What happens? It will not initiate the process. So we will not do it. So when I I will not make a change of the price on the purchase on, and then it will not be initiating a change on all the purchase orders actually. Fine. So I am now initiating the process also upon approval. And click on submit. Fine. Now this three thousand two will now go for approval. This is for laptop actually. Fine. For laptop. So go to the main now. Contract terms will be coming a bit later on. Three thousand two is now getting submitted for laptop actually for at a price of nine actually. So the document has been submitted for approval. Fine, we will now wait for the three thousand two to get approved. So manage agreements. And how about that? Three thousand two. Come search. We are now pending approval. Fine, we are at. So we have here what happens? Uh, yeah, CPA also fine is available for this. Now find the for the supplier actually. We have on three thousand a CPA available for the supplier actually is also open, and then this is now coming fine. So on the supplier we have three zero two support. We have a CPA as well as for the laptop we have a BPA actually. So click on the pending approval. So it will be getting approved now. So all these things are completed now. Fine, approved task completed. <clears throat> I click on the now fine. If you make a requery, three thousand two will be there for the laptop. Click on it. Click on search. Now, fine. It will be open. Now, let me create a PO for the laptop. The price is now nine dollars. The price is now nine dollars. So, let us now go and then create a PO. Now. <coughs> Click on it. We'll now go to the create order. Now. <coughs> so, this is the purchase order I am going to create now. Fine. Supplier is T zero two. For T zero two, we have a three thousand CPA as well as a three thousand two BPA for laptop actually. And click on create. So we can even be driven for the PR also. As of now, there is no referencing document over here. Now, in the requisition agreement, nothing is coming here. Now, go there. Click on it. Add. I'm not going to add the line. I'm going to add the item is what T zero two. So here we go there, and then I will now add the laptop. So the laptop is now getting added. Fine. So you can now see the agreement reference number of three thousand two is coming automatically here, and the price is at nine of nine. So not the three thousand, but the three thousand two. But that the, if you have a BPA available, then BPA will not default. Only the uh, BPA will only default CPA. If there is no BPA, then the CPA will default. Fine. If there is no BPA. So the moment I put the item, so it is now reference the three thousand two, and then the bring in the price. Go for it. You can even say who is the requester for it also. Fine. Normally, what happens? Uh, the requester is the ultimate authority in a PTP life cycle. Normally, we are adding because for whom we are buying it, the purchase officer has to say. Otherwise, if the internal audit team is coming, fine, you know, making a manual PO, so it has to be justified. Fine. If there is no demand, how we can make a PO? So normally, what happens? They will not say this guy has asked for it. <clears throat> so this guy has asked for it. So for whom? What happens? Uh, we are now making this PO. Fine. The requester name has to be there. That that is the normal way, actually. but it it is not a mandatory one as far as the functionality is concerned. Okay, I know that. So two thousand five is now referencing the three thousand two. Fine, consult it. Fine, it will be getting approved. Two thousand five is now referencing the three thousand. Now, he now the purchase officer is negotiating with the market price. He says that now it can be done. You must enter the request study. One of the date is a mandatory one. So we have to have the requested date or a my own. Go to the place. Go to the schedule. It's not fine. So the requested date is the date given by the requester, and then the promised date is given by the supplier. Fine. One of the date is the mandate. The combination one of them is the mandate. I think that I'll now say today itself is required. So click on submit. So we are submitting it. So two thousand five is now submitted properly. <laughs> now we'll now wait for the what happens? The manager orders and then see this. No fine. Two thousand five. It will be in getting approved. So we can even initiate it from PR actually. Fine. That is the best way. Actually. Otherwise, at least the requester's name has to be popped in there. 
ಹೇಳ್ತ In the meantime, we will now go for what happens the expense accruals actually. Go and see the next topic that is expense accrual. Go that one. Hello, good morning. So then I go to the patient procurement. Ah, I don't know. Then I go to the patient procurement. I don't know. Say purchasing, uh, fusion purchasing accounting. Find this document. I'm going to open. Find fusion purchasing accounting is the document I'm opening it up. So here I have now given one more liability account. and i'm going to use it for expense accruals i'm going to use it for expense accruals if you go on and see this way if i'm going to the ptp process so once when you receive an item in the gate what happens the accrual is hit so for an asset item it will be hitting the asset accrual and then if the item is going to be an expense item it will be hitting the expense accrual actually it will be hitting the expense accrual so we will now make a purchase order for the expense item and then we will now see account will not be there later on what happens we will now populate the expense accrual So I'm not going to wait. What? So go ahead. And then next exercise is actually another like point. Click on search. So it is open actually. So it is not done. Now what I do is I now go to the what's called BPA and then change the price to eight fifty actually. So the purchase officer is now uh, negotiating again with the supplier. You know, going again. So he now go to the manager agreements. He will now query the two thousand two. Another agreement number is two thousand two. Click on search. Two thousand two or what exactly? Three thousand or three thousand? Three thousand is the one. And click on search. The number is correct. He will now go and then modify it. And then go to the actions and go to edit. He will go to edit the price. He has now negotiated the supplier. And then you know what happens? Ten percent discount. Now, there is one. You go there. He will now negotiate the price actually. It is now ten percent. I will now put say an A fifteen. Always give a meaningful one. Right? Whatever. The value uh, is not a number. How come? Oh God. Colon. <laughs> okay. I will now put colon actually. A fifteen. So now he has now negotiated. Now since if you go and then see on the what happens the controls now. So once when you submit for approval, it will be initiating a retroactive pricing process, and then it will only reprice the open order. If the order is closed, it will not reprice it. If you want to apply it for even the closed orders, you remove the stick mark actually, and then the communicate the price updates to all people. And so, so this is the one. So go that thing on it. I will not. I will not change the price to eight fifty. <clears throat> so the price has been changed to eight fifty, and then remember it must be non-cumulative. Otherwise, it will not work. And click on submit now. Click on submit. So the change order one is now submitted for them. This will now auto trigger a change on the two thousand five. So what happens? It is one. So the change order is now undergoing a change. The change order is pending actually. So once when this is completed, we can now see the two thousand five will also undergo a change automatically. So once when this is completed, we can now see the two thousand five, which is referencing this three thousand two, will also undergo a change, and this I has to go on. So once the change order gets approved, then the two thousand five will also start to work on it. So the this is now gone now and now after updated. So go there. So click on done and then come out of it now. And then we'll now go and then have a look at the manager orders. Go to the manager orders. Let us now query the two thousand five order. Order number is two thousand five. And then click on search. So this has to undergo a change actually. This has to undergo a change. And click on search. It has to undergo a change, and the change icon has to come now. Yeah, see the change icon has started coming. So it is now automatically undergoing a change. Change order is now pending. So once when it is completed, what happens? I can do it. But if a payable invoice is created, EBIS creates an adjusting invoice also, and that future is yet to come. There is other in the last September I inquired, and then uh, my students told that uh, they even had a raised uh, SR. Uh, so it is in the process basically. So probably in twenty two A, the adjusting invoice uh, future is also enabled. I think probably. So if anybody knows about how to make the adjusting invoice, fine. Uh, please uh, tell me. I will now learn it and then I will now teach you. As of now, uh, till last year September it was not there. 
Now it is not completed. If you go and then see this, you will not see the price as 850. The ordered amount itself is not completed as 850. So this is called retractive pricing. For a retractive pricing, the prerequisite is what? It must be a non-cumulative one. Only for a non-cumulative, it will work. Otherwise, for a cumulative one, it will not work. It is true in EBIS also. But EBIS creates even adjusting uh, what happens in invoice actually. But apart from that, the other controls like what happens, uh, oh, uh, do the repricing only for the open orders and then initiate the automatic ones. Everything is there. Uh, and then if the initiate is not there, we can even manually initiate. I don't know how to manually initiate it. There must be some uh, concurrent program for manually initiate. On that one, what happens uh, upon approval, you initiate the retractive pricing, that the tick mark is there. Sometimes what happens is that people would like to manually initiate. If anybody knows the task name for manually initiating the retroactive pricing, please tell me, we'll now share with the group actually. I don't know what is the task name. And you have to go through the implementation guides. It will now give you all this. No, no patience at all. <laughs> now, if we go and then create an expense item, expense uh, item, a purchase order for the expense item, and you will now go to the create order. Let me create an item, uh, purchase order for an expense item. Purchase order I'm creating. So the expense accrual is not yet set at all. Fine. It will be giving a problem. So supplier is what? T02. <clears throat> I don't know, popular supplier. Go down. <clears throat> and then I will now add the expense item. Okay. So it has to hit the expense accrual. Fine. T02 underscore. I forgot the name of the expense item. Uh, yeah, easy to be expensive. I will now go for 100 quantities. And then I go to the schedules and then here the PD or NPD is a mandatory fine. PD is a promise date and then uh, uh, NPD is a need be date. Basically. I don't know if it is date. And requested data need be date. So one of the date is a mandatory. And you have to save now. And then if you go and then try to validate, it will now say accrual is not hit at all. What if for an asset item, we have not defined that word. For the expense item, we have not defined that word. And go to the actions and go to validate. It will say accrual is not defined at all. So no errors or warnings are found. Come on, yeah. Go, come. go to the distributions and then have a look at it. Now. Click on the distributions. Go there. So click on it. There are no errors. Go down. So it has now taken 1001 now. Fine. From that from 1001 is a liability account. Fine. It has now taken the asset liability itself. Fine. Okay, whether item is an asset or expense, it is now hitting the common one only. It is now hitting the common one only. I've forgotten this also. And 1001 is a liability. Uh, maybe if I go for a, what happens, a description based one, then the expense accrual is required actually. Fine. Description based only is expense. For both asset and expense, this is a common accrual. Maybe, yeah. For an asset item and expense item, this is a common accrual. So let me create what, yeah, one line for what happens, a description based one. Now, for the description based, the, the employee's charge account will be coming now. I will now add the, go to the lines and then add a line. So go back to the I will now add a line. For a description based, the employee's charge account will be coming. Go there. So item is not there. I will now say what happens. I will now say cable lane. Cable lane is a description. And then it is basically category based. Actually. I will now put a category. If I'm T02, I will now put a category. <coughs> so cable lane will be having a this thing now, I will not say this stuff. So it is a category based one actually. So I will not say 10 kilometers actually. Kilo and you have no point. 10 kilometers of cable laying actually. Click on it. Uh, something I'm going to let me choose anything. I don't know that the kilogram is going to come on time. Kilometer has to come on time. Let's see this. Kilo and then make a search. Uh, it is a K and then. Yeah, I think kilometer. <clears throat> yeah, it is coming. Kilometer. So 10 kilometers of cable laying has to be done. And then when he is making it, the requester's name is a mandatory one. Fine. Then only what about the charge account will be coming automatically. So you know, give a save now. Fine. Click on save. That itself what happens? The basic price. So I will say 12 now. And then the requester name has not been given. I will not give a save. It has to throw an error now. Now it's I'm saving it. So what happens? The charge account cannot be derived. So uh, the account for account number two charge account could not be determined because there is no mapping for this. So and then there is no mapping set for the purchase expense account also. Right? This is another thing. So first let us now put the ex uh, purchase officer fine account. If you go to the place and then what happens, it has now saved it actually. We will now go to the distributions and then on the second line, I'm now already selling the second line now. Right? The one if you go on the navy, you won't be having the charge account at all. The charge account, okay, it has now come actually fine. I don't know how it has come now. 
is line okay. one, Anna. Oh, I am in line one now. <laughs> okay, I am in line one actually. Go down. Uh, cable link. I will go to the second line. Cable link. Line cable link. I am going to click on edit now. The charge account has not come yet. See, the charge account has not come. So, for a description based, the charge and variance are going to be the same actually. Fine. The description based, the charge and variance are going to be the same. Okay, okay, fine. So, we are given 1007 as the requester's charge account actually on the expense account. Fine. I will now go to the place and then give the request. Okay, fine. Once I give the request, the charge account will be different. Go to the line now. We will now populate the request over here. So, the requester for that, what was it? This one, fine. The this one, we need the request. Okay. So it's a EMP uh, one space comma. I'm not putting the same person as the expert. In reality, it will be different. So I'll not put the. Okay. So once when I put the one and then I give a save now and click on save. So the charge account will come, but the accrual will not. Fine, accrual is not. The charge is now sorted out actually. Fine, accrual is not the main problem. So I go there and then have a look at it now. If you go to the what's called distributions and then have a look at it now. Fine, one. The, the charge account has come from the cable link. What happens? It goes there. So click on edit now. You might find the charge account first. So the charge account has come. And then there is here editable action. Fine. Whenever you're having a description based, it comes from the employees, the requester's uh, expense account. It is becoming it is. So the charge account and variance account are same if it is going to be a description based. It's a service element. Now accrual is not in common. So we will now set up the accrual action. Let us now set up the accrual. Let us now set up the accrual. So we'll now go to this place, fine. Right? Go to this place. And then we'll now have to go and then go to the mapping set actually. So go to the setup and that. Now this time we have to go to the purchasing and manage mapping set actually. Drop it down. So we'll now go to the purchasing and manage mapping set. Procurement's manage mapping. Procurement, I don't say manage mapping set. Manage percentage. Map percentage. Set percentage. Manage mapping set for the procurement transaction accounts. Thank you. And then go to the manage mapping set of the procurement. I'm in the procurement actually. <clears throat> I'm in the procurement. And then here, expense accrual account for the business unit level. Fine. This is always the BU level. Fine. We have the same thing available on the purchasing options in EBS business. And go back to point. So, expense accrual account for the business unit level. At the BU level, I'm going to put a expense account. I'm going to add it now. Fine. Click on plus one. I'm going to add my chart of accounts over here. Drop it down. So T02. Go there. So select it. And then you go down. And give a plus. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I will now put 1012 as the what happens at liability account. And then the accrual action. So, that, so I will now put what? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1012. And then I will now set as a default. So we can even it will be common for all the B use basically. Normally you'll be using it for common and then if you want to have a separate entry for every view, that will override the default. We'll have one default over here, and then uh, we can even override by adding one more line for every view also. And that becomes ultimate. If you have a view specific one, that is the top priority. If there is no view specific one, the least priority is all stars actually. So to be unique. So we are now adding the expense accrual at the BU level. Sometimes what happens is people will have the accrual for both asset and expense same also. It all depends upon the company. If they want to accrue uh, both asset and expense, or the asset as well as that, uh, the, uh, the, what the service items. Fine. It is not an expense item, it is a service item. And for the service items also, if you want to accrue in the same place, we can also. Or you can even have a BU level accruals also available over here. <clears throat> no setting as a default. The system has now become slow. <laughs> we can't help it actually. <laughs> So this is on expense accrual. The next topic is what? Uh, I do not want to create what? Yeah, PO at all, automatically. So when so many requisitions are coming, I wanted to create a PO manually. And remember, for a desktop, we already have what? Your yeah, BPA available there. BPA is available. So go there, click on it, go down now. And go there, and then click on save and close. Fine. Now the expense accrual for the service item is now defined. So we will now go to the purchase document. Any document. 
to go there. We will now rebuild the account. So the accrual account will be done. What action we are going to rebuild the account. So once we rebuild it, what are we going to carry it? So the account is coming. So go to OK. And then here, we'll now go and have a look at it. So good actions and good value, you do not have any issue at all. <coughs> no issues. Then afterwards, you can submit it. So this completes what? The charge account for your service item is going to come from the requester's name now. Right? The line level, if you put the requester, the requester's charge account will be coming. Right? Normally, whenever you have such a service item, so we'll always be adding the requester. The requester's uh, expense, account the, uh, expense account or the charge account. And then you have the facility of overriding this also. Right? If you have the facility of overriding also. Whereas accrual, we cannot override. If you go there, click on it. I will not go there. Go to this place. If you go to the cable link, I go there. Uh, your charge account can be overridden, but not accrual. And accrual cannot be overridden. This can be overridden. You can even override on the view. And then when you override it, the variance will be set to the charge account. Actually. We cannot have any variance for a service item. Actually. Service item variance is no problem. So that's why it is now putting the same account over here. For asset item, we will be having a different account. <coughs> so this cannot be overridden. And that will be coming from the mapping set only. So this is on the expense items on the and the service items. Could be. If there is going to be an expense item, then expense sub item, the expense sub unitary, those things we already seen. Fine. That it will now follow that route. Fine. Asset into expense, and then asset into uh, expense and asset. Fine. These six will be coming into picture actually. And where the point will be coming. So the employee's expense account will now only come for service items. Only for the service. We can even have the user preferred account. Right. But we don't have any user preferred account for a purchase order actually. This is there only for purchase requisitions actually. This is there only for purchase requisition. And then we don't have any uh, user preferred accounts for the purchase orders. Actually. Maybe it may be there. I'm not sure about it. If you find out about how to put a user preferred account for the purchase orders, please educate all of us. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I will know what happens. Uh, now, whenever I create what happens, if you go on and see, you know, I, I cancel and then come out of it now. <clears throat> you can even submit problem. I'm going to leave. No more I will not go to the manage agreements. And then we have an agreement available for the factor on search now. So we have a BP available, fine, 3,000 there. So the BPA is now open now, fine, that point. And then if you go on and see now, so we have a limit of 10,000, fine, the fine, the least amount of this much. And then you can now see for the asset item, I don't want, you know, no, I don't want this one now, not the 3,001 actually. Uh, what else is the BP available now? It is BPA. Uh, I think uh, 3000 is a CPA, uh, 3002 is a BPA. Okay, 3002, we go on and see now. 3002 is for the desktop, actually. So, 3002 is for the laptop. Yeah. Laptop, you have a BPA. So, we have a blanket purchase agreement for a laptop now. 3000. Now, whenever I create a requisition, the system will be creating a PO automatically. But I don't want the PO to be created automatically. I want to have a control on this. Right? So, this is called manual generation of orders. Actually. So for which, what happens, you go there, we are going to do this. If you want to have a manual control, so go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, what go to the actions and then go to offerings. Go to actions and then go to offerings. And then I want to have a manual control of this. So here, what happens, I go there, go to the procurement. The procurement. Click on the procurement. And then go to the opt in futures. So we have seen the touchless buying, we have seen the retractive pricing. Now we are going to see the manual control of this. Now you go to the purchasing and then again click on the futures. Right? Open up the purchasing and then click on the futures. In the purchasing, you go to the futures. You go to the futures of the purchasing. I'm going to go to the futures of the purchasing. Here, what happens? Consolidate online requisitions into fewer purchase orders. That means what? When the requisition is made, when you want to consolidate, you enable this. That means what? It will not create automatically any PO at all. You know, consolidating it. So once when you consolidate it, it will not create a PO automatically. Only when you run the create orders or generate orders, at the time it will not create. Because multiple departments will be creating the requisition. You would like to have one PO created at the end of the day or at the end of the week or something like that. 
fine you know how combined every all the requisitions into one pew actually fine this is a requirement in many companies so they will now consolidate all the online requisitions into fewer purchase orders must be enabled thank you kondana now let us go there and then create our requisition now this time it will not create anything at all so we have a what's called a blanket purchase agreement for our laptop now fine so i will now go on and create what i will now create a what's called a requisition click on it i will now go to the home icon i will now create a requisition one up so go there i will be having in the this thing itself in the favorites what happens i will go to the shop so we have uh, what happens the blanket agreement for available for the laptop actually and laptop is available so we don't go there go to the purchase requisitions so let me create it go the enter requisition lines since uh, that will there will be a limit on the bpa fine i will now use one and one and two one quantity now and so t023 i think 023 is a laptop i will now go for one quantity with a different need be detected Now go there. We'll have a different period. So laptop is not coming over, you know. So the need period, request date. The requested date also can be controlled. Actually, I will not tell you about how to control it. So here you see, it is eighth of May of March, and then it is now coming as eleventh of March. That means what? There is a three-day shift on the requested date automatically. So that also will be controlled. I will not tell you about how to control the requested date. So automatic shifting is now by three days. Can even control it. Fine. Let's say it is now eleventh of March. It's okay. Eleventh of March. It is for one quantity actually. So it's for one quantity. Laptop of one quantity. Go back to one. And then here I am now going to put the agreement number also. Fine. The blanket agreement is what? Now say three thousand two. Go to the purchase requisition. Three thousand two is the one. Go there. The one you are giving. The price of this one will become. Agreement number is what? Oh, sorry. It's not a CPA. It's a BP actually. Take it as a BP. So. Three thousand two. The price will be eight fifty or something like that. So one quantity. I want it on eleventh of March. Let me submit it. Add to cart. Add to cart. So it's for eleventh of March. I need it. Find one quantity. Now go there and then let me submit it. So go to the review and then submit. It. So click on submit. So one thousand nine is for one quantity needed on eleventh of March. This is by one department. Now one more department is now creating. Now what is the more? What is the enter requisition lines? Another department is now creating for the same item. So it is the T zero two three. It is now creating it for the same item. I will now put the BP and number three thousand two. Sorry, sir. I don't need to do supply actually. So three thousand two is the one. So I will now make it as fifteenth of March. I will now make it as what? Fifteenth of March. That is eleventh of March. And then this time, he, the another department needs two quantities. So some companies will know what happens. They consolidate everything. Since it's a BPA, the negotiator is coming. He cannot do anything at all. It has to refer to the BPA. So it is two quantities on fifteenth of March. One quantity on eleventh of March. So click on add to cart. Add to cart. No, no, not. So click on review now. And then click on submit. One thousand ten is now submitted. Now we have submitted both the things. Now. So if you go and then see for this now, fine. There won't be any POs at all. If you go there, if you go to the home icon, and then if you go to the star, and then we'll now go to the purchase order area now. Sir, one thousand nine and one thousand ten will not be available on the process requisition area. On the process requisition, you cannot see one thousand nine and one thousand ten at all. You cannot see because they are held by the system actually. If you go on the metric query, it will not be available. Both one thousand nine and one thousand ten will not be available at all. So what I am going to do is I will now run the generate orders. We will have to run the generate orders. Okay, see, one thousand one four is one thousand nine and ten are not coming at all. <clears throat> so once when you run the generate orders, it will be creating one PO for both one thousand nine and one thousand ten. 
I have no issue that that is already done. Now, fine, whether the one thousand nine, one thousand ten, or now approved or not, we know how to do it. Go to the purchase requisition. We will now go to the manager requisition. Fine, click on the manager requisition and how to do it. So here itself we can see nine and ten are already approved actually. Nine and ten are already approved. Manager requisition is for the requisitions created by this user actually. It is user specific area. And then if it is coming from external systems like what happens your inventory, inventory to PO. What happens? That will not come in the manager requisition form. That will, if it is getting held up, it will come in the process requisition, not at manager. So manager requisition is user specific, whereas process requisition is whatever has reached that place for processing it. Now what I do is I will now go and then generate the orders for nine and ten. We are going to generate the orders. So now the uh, purchase officer is there. Okay, when okay, one common order on this. We now go to that PO overview. Is now going to create what one common PO. We click on it. Go there. He will now go to what generate orders. He will now run this concurrent. Right. So after having sufficient numbers, maybe the frequency he may be running it is what either every day, end or every weekend or whatever it is on. Right? Depending upon the comparison. So generate orders. So it is not having any parameters. We are going to submit any process. Go there. The business unit, the requisition view. If you want, you can do it. Now. You don't have, if you have multiple uh, client view, you can add it. Otherwise, you can leave it as such. Now, thank you for submit. It will now be generating the orders for whatever has reached the area of this. Refresh it. I don't know whether we can see the log or not. I'm not sure about it. It's not running. Refresh it. It is now completed. It has to go to succeeded actually. Wait for it to succeed. It is now succeeded. View output. View output is coming. So click on the view output and we'll see whether the orders are created or not. Click on it. Now we have a text. Click on the text. Generate orders. Job successfully submitted. It is not only saying it is now submitted. And nothing else is now saying. Ah, the view log will now give the orders. I'm going to click on the view log. Click on the view log. Click on it. Click on the. Oh God! So much of the data. I don't know how to see this. So file, and then I now go for a new one. Now. Paste it over here. Directly from the position line, end of sub programs, all these things are like processing completed. Completed automatic PO creation. So, I'm not saying that. so the requisitioning BUID, fine number. Uh, 2007 errors encountered actually. Fine. What are the errors? I don't know what are the errors. God, so much of the data is here. We cannot understand this one. So many errors there. Lines are so many. Okay, you try to analyze this. Okay, you know, started finishing all these things. I'm saying, fine. Maybe some of them may not be eligible for creation of a PO. Fine. So that may be the reason actually. <clears throat> so it is basically called automatic document sourcing. So have a look at it. Okay, we are unable to understand it. Okay, because there are many, many is you know, coming up. Okay, I won't say it. Let us go there and then have a look at this place. Okay. Close it down. Now have a look at it. Click on them. Along with the manage orders, and then see. Click on it. Along with the manage orders. Fine. Click on this. So click on search. So there is one open order available as 2007. We'll now open up and then see this. So click on the open order. I think this may be the one. Right? Click on the open order. Go down and then see. Fine. So we have a laptop item, and then there are two one quantity and two quantities are required by for two requisitions. And then if you go to the distributions, distributions are sub-level, sub limited level distributions as well as your what about that? Your shipment distributions basically. I click on the distribution. I think I'm okay. Fine here, what about they got two lines actually? One for this, and then one for the other one. So we got this one. It is basically sub limited level distributions as well as. You are a different one from fine. If you click on the details, you can now see whether the requisition number is referenced here or not. Click on it. The source agreement is coming here. 
you know that it is. We have to have the requisition number also. Okay, 1009 has to come. I'm not coming here. It's okay. there, Nana. Is there? Ah, huh? where exactly is it? 1000 delivery. Delivery. Ah, here it is. There. So we have the requisition number coming over here. The delivery we have is there. Click on that one. And then for the next one, the requisition number is 1000. And then click on the details now. If you click on the details, it will not go for the edit. <coughs> okay, fine. <coughs> so this is the way by which what happens? You can now create manually this one. So let me go there and then remove it actually. I don't know what this feature now. I don't know what is it? Uh, supplier invoice for purchasing. Uh, what is this? The purchasing, click on edit now. In the purchasing, I'm editing the features and then I will now remove the consolidation actually. So if you want, you can put it. So consolidation is now remote. So it will now create automatically for us. The next topic is how to shift the need by date. The need by date can be shipped right. So now you'll see, we are now seeing three days now. So if you want all the requisitions to be automatically shifted to some dates, we can even very well use this profile actually. The profile is there by which whatever we can now shift the dates. So click on search. So manage this is a self profile actually. So this has been kept on the self service procurement. Fine. This profile has been kept on the self service procurement, not on purchasing profile. It is not on the procurement profile. It is a self service procurement profile options. They have kept this shifting of the date actually. So manager requested date offset. POR. POR is for self-service procurement, but this is common for your requisition sector. POR requested date offset. And this is only this many profiles are available here. If you go there and then click on the POR requested date offset, it will be by default. What happens? It will be three days now. Fine. I will now make it as three days. Change it. Site level and change it. On same place. Now, when you create a requisition, it will be getting automatically shifted to what? 10 days. Have you got coffee, Gang? So you go there, go to the place. And then here, I will now go to the shop. Click on the shop. So now I will now create a requisition fine. Go to the enter requisition lines. The date has to be shifted by. Now, if 11 3 was coming, now it has to be shifted by 18 3. So, so previously it was 11 3 actually, fine. Now it is 18 3. 10 days shift actually. So this can be controlled by that, uh, that profile. But you can even override the defaults actually. The defaults can be overridden. So this completes all the activities on the purchase orders. Fine. We have seen the simple purchase orders of uh, what happens at your uh, CPA, SPO, and then BPA. Then we have seen the automation also. Fine. PR, CPA, uh, SPO. And then we have seen the automation of PR, BPA, SPO. Then afterwards, we have seen the touchless buying. And then we are now seeing the retroactive pricing. And then we are now seeing how about how to club various purchase orders, purchase requisitions into one purchase order. So with which we complete all the activities on the purchase order. Now we are going to go, go for the grand, next, next topic called receiving. Right? So we are going to begin receiving. It. So let me receive first of all, what happens? I will now create three items for the receiving test now. So let me go to the home. Now go to the it's called product management. Product information management, and then we are now going to begin receiving it. I'm going to create so for the receiving test, I'm now going to have three items. So T020. And then click on OK. So it's okay, thank you, Mark. So item is uh, T025, 567, I'm going to be enough. And 567, I'm going to use it. Now. Uh, 025, and then uh, 0226, and then 27, 567. If you go to the specifications, specifications, they have added three new attributes on the purchasing engine. There are now three new, new attributes have been added. One is what your allow substitute receipts, allow unordered, and then allow express transactions. So this is not available in EVs at all. Right? This has been newly added. 
And then initially, what happens only when you set it as the substitute will work, the unordered will work, and then the express transaction will work. So this way it works actually. <coughs> so it's not done now. Right? So these are the, the list price is also there. I will not go to the associations, then let me associate with the child. Order. So T025 rec1 is there, and go to the action, and go to select that, let me associate. So T02, query now, and I will associate with the child. Order. Apply and then click on So rec1 is now created. And go there. So save and close. We will now create rec2. So we can even copy this item into another one. I want to now go to the create item. Let us now copy this item into that. E02. So create from copy. So create new what I'm going to do. Item is what? 025. It will be coming here. Click on it. Query for it. So is it being just one up and one? So copy attributes from the uh, then apply the template actually. Fine. That is more than sufficient actually. Uh, why is it uh, given a it's called uh, give a cancel and okay. <clears throat> uh, this has to be done by T zero to pay underscore. The description has already come now. So copy attributes and then, then apply template. This is okay. Fine. I don't want to apply any template box and can't leave it to the template. So click on okay now. Fine. Okay. This is not done. <clears throat> so we can even copy and then create it. So the item name is a T026 underscore rec underscore. Two. So go to the go to the uh, associations now. Already all the attributes are already copied now. Actions and then go to select. <clears throat> so the T02, fine. I'm query for it now. So the child. So the second item is now created. Now we are going to go go and then create our third item. Now coffee has come. We are now going to have a coffee break. <clears throat> now I will now go and then create my third item. Click on it. Now go to the create item. Then I'm going to create the third item. T020. <clears throat> no, I don't find the comment. And we can even copy or we can create new options. Apply template and then So it is a T025677. <clears throat> and seven. And seven. It is a rec underscore T. Yes. Leaving clean. So go to the associations that will be associated with the child <clears throat> So go to the actions and go to selection. The T zero two nine three. The child order and click on apply and click on apply. <laughs> so all the three items are now created. Okay. Same and close. Now I'm now going to make a purchase order for the first item. And then let me make a purchase order for the first item. Rec item now. Go to the PO overview. Let me create a PO for the rec one now. Create order. <clears throat> we are not creating an order. Okay. Supply is T02. So click on create. For the rec one, I'm going to create a purchase order for 100 one list. Go down. Click on pass. So item is a T025. <clears throat> I will not go for 100 points. It's okay for you to do that. You're all done. We go to the schedules and then give the date. Need me date. No data. The mandatory one. Or you say place date is required. So click on submit. It will not get updated. So 2008 is now getting submitted for 100 points. Before which, what happens? I go to the schedules and then I will not edit. I will not make the result routing as direct. So we are going to make the result routing as direct to begin with. It is direct. So 2008 is now having a direct result. The allow substitute result is coming because the item it has been enabled actually. So since the attribute has been enabled, that is getting defaulted onto the PO actually. 
So click on okay. So 2008 is the one which is having a direct reserve protein. So click on submit. That means what? The receive and deliver will happen in one go actually. 2008. So the first activity is what? We have to go and then see whether you have the receiving agent or not. We must have the receiving agent available. So the person must have the receiving agent for receiving it to the gate. And then he must have the warehouse manager for delivering it to the inventory. I mean, these two roles are a must for receiving it actually. So go to the tools. And then I go to the security console. And then we'll now query for the user actually. <clears throat> whether we have the appropriate roles or not. So go to the users. I will now put the team here. Okay. And then go to the EMP1. And then check for the receiving agent and then this. So accounts payable, everything is there. Fine, go, go down, go down, go down, go down. And I might have had a detect. The receiving agent is there for receiving the gate. And then you must have the warehouse manager also. And warehouse manager is for delivering it to the supplement director. Warehouse manager. But if you have the warehouse manager, the receiving agent is inbuilt on the warehouse manager. So that this role is now having an inbuilt office. Right? So, but if you want a man to only receive in the gate, then you will be given only the receiving agent and not for delivery. This is for the put away. Right? So, depending upon the inbuilt. And then afterwards, what happens? The data access is also required for this. We will not have a look at the data access. What does it happen, maintenance? The data access is a must structure. Generally, you, can't, you can do this. So click on search. It's called manage data access for users. So not this one, sorry, I'm sorry. Now, on the point of 9.45, I'm going to run. Okay. Okay. So, I will now query for the user now. I'm going to do the T02 underscore EMP1. And then I will now see how many data access we have here. So, click on search. <clears throat> so, we are not given any data access at all. I will now add. So, we will now first of all add find T02. EMP1. And then one for what? First of all, you have to have an inventory manager to look at the stock. Inventory. And then go there. And then go there. So this is for this all. And then I will now duplicate it. <coughs> one for the receiving agent actually. The receiving agent. Okay. Space. And then it's a T zero two. One is for what barrows man. So this is basically responsible for put away actually. And then if you wanted to do any pick confirm now, fine. If you want to do any pick confirm, then you have to have a shipping manager also. So these are the four basic data access which is required. So it is called a shipping manager. And remember, reality, really speaking, we don't need this at all. Fine. We don't, I, I think I have not given the role at all. Move on. The shipping manager role has not been given now. <laughs> but it's all gone actually. Really bad now. <laughs> So, so shipping manager role has not been added. And that is for pick confirm actually. And when you want to perform pick confirm, what happens? You must have uh, that one. So I will not first of all choose this one. And the role is what inventory manager. So I don't have any shipping manager actually assigned over here now. And whenever you want to perform any movement request pick confirmation, then you need it actually. So these are the four roles which are required. I thought that I have given it, but I have not given it. Shipping manager. So duplicate it now. That's it. We'll not save it. We need actually four data access. In reality, what happens is that we really don't need this data access at all, but the SAS module uh, needs this compliance actually. Right? Whenever you perform an inventory transaction, 
the SaaS software model says that if you don't have that security, we will not grant you the license. So that's why Oracle has added this. Even though we really, strictly speaking, we don't need such a security at all. This is a very unnecessary security, but we are forced to have the security. The record of this combination already exists. What is that here? Inventory manager, receiving agent, warehouse manager. I will not delete this now, fine. I will not delete this. I will clear it now. Oh, sorry, not no, 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 clear it. I am not duplicated it actually. So I will go there and now clear it. I don't know which one is existing. Fine, right? no, inventory manager may be existing now. I will click on save and close now. A combination of this value already exists now. All got to cancel and see what is existing there. I click on search. I will see what the combination is. I think there will be maybe one. Okay. Nothing is coming actually. Users with the data access, nothing is there. Then how it's saying this is already existing. T02 underscore EMP11. Fine, I will not say receiving agent. Receiving agent. Your Zero to one. Let me apply it now and save and close. The record of the combination of value already exists. But it is not showing me here. What is the problem? Yeah. Users the data access T zero to underscore EMP one. If you go there and then choose this receiving agent. Click on search now. I will say receiving agent. It is not showing me. And sometimes what happens that this Nakara Karta is someone many have. Click on search now. It has to show me an entry find. Nothing is there actually. Okay, we'll now go and then check whether we have the rule of we'll now go to the inventory and then we'll now have a look at it. So what is the PO number? Anybody remember it? PO number is what? What purchasing document up to 2008, okay. maybe 2008. Now, okay, fine. We'll now have a look at it. Now, have a look at it. 2008 is the purchase of the and it comes down. We'll now go to the inventory. Is it? it says it is already existing. We'll now see this. I will now go to the what supply chain execution. I go to the supply chain execution and then I go to the inventory management. Inventory management. So, click on it. We'll go there. And then I will now go to what receipts. I will now say receive expected shipments. T021, the org has to come now. Inventory org is there. So you see, it is not coming at all. The org is not coming at all. Fine. Change org is not coming at all. Then why it is not allowing me to do this now? Fine. I will now log out and log in. Fine. Sign out and sign in. So you must be in a position to what happens to add this data security activity. Okay. I must be in a position to add the data security actually. And it should not say that it is already existing actually. <clears throat> oh, T02 EMP1. I think I made a mistake there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not made a mistake actually. In the manage message. Data. This, this. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. So click on plus one. So I not put the T02 actually. And T02 underscore EMP1. EMP1. I put the same one. Viewing huh? agent. Click on an inventory organization. So click on save and close. It is accepted now. I don't know why it does not accept it. Previously, it did not accept it. So T02 is code EMP1. It is basically a warehouse manager. Warehouse manager. With the inventory or T02.
Click on save and close now. You're not accepting it, and then inventory manager also will not help. Some issue. And I don't know whether I have not put the proper user or not previously. I have a doubt actually. I might have put T01 actually. Inventory. Now you go to users the data access and query for the user of T02 underscore EMP click on search. So it has shown me all the so shipping agent is also another uh, another what happens in the taxes. It's an unnecessary security, but we have to comply with that. No other thing. Purchasing is not having any data security. Right? Purchase orders, purchase requisitions, and all do not have any data security. So no data security is required for the purchasing activity. But for inventory, the physical material transactions we need. It. Order management also needs a lot of security. Right? So much of an unnecessary security they have. Meaningless thing. What to we have to live with it. Order management has got a lot of data security. So go there. Now we will now go to what supply chain execution. We will now go to the supply chain execution. And then here we will now go to the inventory management. And then we will now receive it. Now go there. So go to the inventory and then go to the receipts now. I will now go on them. Click on the receive expected shipment. Since we have a data access only for one org, that will be coming up automatically over here. The org is coming. Otherwise, what happens? The change org will be coming. So the purchase order number is what? 2008. And then you have now. Click on search. So it is a direct result. And so what happens? The receive and deliver will be in one word. Click on search now. It's not coming. Select it and then we are going to receive it. And click on receive it. So we are going to receive it. Right. So 100 quantity is the one. So let us now receive it directly. So once when you are receiving it, it will be delivered into the inventory also. It is a receive and deliver put together. The destination is going to be inventory. And then we have to populate the sub-inventory. In which sub-inventory you are going to populate? No, 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 no. So it is receive plus deliver in one go actually. <clears throat> so I will now choose the RMS one over here. Click on creators. So based upon the GRN properties of it, what happens are you doing it? The manager receiving parameters must be done. You must enter the quantity. So if you click on the show receive quantity, it will not show you how much is expected from the supplier actually. And then click on create result. So we are not going to do that. So click on submit by which what happens, the GRN number gets created. Right? Based upon the receiving parameters of JG1. So one thousand dollars is the GRN number. Let's say right click and then duplicate. The inventory manager. We'll now go to the inventory and then have a look at. We we'll go to the inventory and then have a look of manage item quantities. It is a T zero two five the one that you are there. And then, how much is in the receiving area? How much is inbound? We can see. And then click on search. Click on so you can now see that what happens? There is nothing inbound, nothing is receiving, and then it is all in the inventory. Now, let me duplicate this purchase order into what? You go there. I'm going to go there. Right click and then duplicate. Let me duplicate this order into another order. <coughs> I'll go to the higher item. 2008, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to the PO overview. Let me query it and then do it. You go to manage orders. Order number is 2008. Now it will now say it's closed for receiving because it has been closed. So once when a PO is closed for receiving, then we cannot receive anything any further at all. We'll come to that a bit later now. Select and then go to actions and go to duplicate. It is called a repeat order. So I am now placing a repeat order for the supplier. The only change which I am going to make it is what? It is a standard as a code. Go down. Everything is same. I go to the schedules and then make it to standard actually. 
So click on it. And then go down. I will not make it this time. The result routing is changed. I click on OK. And then 2009 is now going to be submitted for approval. I click on submit. Now we will now open up this document now. And there's one called receiving document. You have a document called receiving infusion procurement documentation. Right? This is called receiving document. And open it up. Double point. Receiving document is open up. So just read it. I find so many blah blahs are there. Keep on reading it. And what are the data to be standard is a good. So we have a golden rule on the receiving area that the PO quantity is nothing but the expected result of the gate, and then the quantity lying in the receiving section, and then the quantity delivered to inventory. And there's a golden rule in the receiving. So you go there and then have a look at it. The total rule you're going to have a look at it. The 2009 is the one. If you go to the manager and quantities, and then here, what happens? You go there. And then if you make a search for it, you'll now see inbound is going to be 100. Because 2009 is now approved. The inbound will be 100. I click on search and I'll now see inbound is So what I'm going to do is I will now make a result of 90. Receive 90 quantities again. Now go to this place. <coughs> the inbound is there. So I'll now go to the results. And then let us now query for whatever that receive expected shipments for 2009. Now we are going to make a receipt of 90 in the gate. The supplier has supplied only 90. If you click on the receipt, and then if you click on the show receipt quantity, it will now say how much is expected from supplier, but he has shipped only 98. 100 is expected, but he has shipped only 90 now. 90 we are going to put. So we cannot put any sub inventory over here because it is not going to the receiving section actually. Had it been direct, they will know the destination will be coming automatically as inventory. Now, since it is a standard, we can only receive in the gate, and then it is a two step process of what receive and deliver. By 90 quantities, I click on create. You are not going to get a GR number. So click on submit a GR number gets created. We can even fill up all these information. 1002 is the GR number. So if you go to the manage on this one, and I think quantities and see. So 10 is expected, 90 will be receiving. Make a search now. It will be 10 is expected, 90 is receiving. <clears throat> The on hand is 100. Now, we'll now go to this document. So, this is the equation now. Fine. The equation is what the PO quantity is going to be expected results of the gate. Fine. And then the quantity lying in the receiving section plus quantity delivered in the inventory. So, for the 100, so we have 10 plus 90 plus 0. And the receiving section, we are now examining it. We found that the 15 quantities are damaged actually. So, deliver only 75 quantities in the inventory. Fine. We're going to deliver. We found that 15 are damaged actually. Fine. We're going to do this. Way. We will now go there, click on it. So 1002 is the GR number. We will now deliver it. Deliver only 75 for this. Click on it. Now go there. We will now go to the put away. So put away is basically, basically on the GR number. Result number is what? 1002. Click on search. Click on put away. So 90 is eligible for delivery, but we found that 15 are defective, and so we are going to make a change. 75. And then while you're doing the delivery, we have to say which sub inventory you are delivering it. That's very important. I will say RMS2. And then click on submit. So by which 75 gets delivered into the sub inventory. The put away transaction was created. Now we'll now go there and then examine it. This will be 10, it will be 75, and then this will be 115 actually. Go <coughs> and search for it. It's not done. <coughs> the next topic is corrections actually. Now, uh, we have blindly, what happens, uh, uh, taken away 15 from this place and then we are delivered it. And then the inventory boy is now, while putting it on the rack, he's counting it actually. He found that the two is missing actually. Fine. So if something is missing, then the supplier is not responsible for it. The receiving section is responsible because they have opened the packing and then they have sent to the inventory actually. So when something is missing on the inventory, then it has to lie only on the receiving section and then supplier is not responsible for the missing one at all. So you can now see the 15 will now go to 17 actually. When I correct the stock as 75 to 73, you can now see the 15 will now go to 17. And then we still expect only 10 from the supplier actually. We are going to perform a correction actually. Now go that click on it. We will not perform a correction. We will not perform a correction. So you click on it and then we will not perform a correction. So correct results is the one. Receive and then correct results. We are going to correct results. So 1002 is a GR number. So click on search. So we have got two things now. So one is already delivered. We have got 75 and then one is lying on the receiving section. So 
it is received into the receiving section it is not delivered into the inventory itself so i will not choose this one and then i am going to correct my inventory in charge is found that it is now having only 73 and not 75 so supplier is not responsible for the missing two fine receiving section becomes responsible this will now become 17 actually click on correct 75 i am going to correct the 73 actually. so the corrected quantity is 73 and then click on submit so the moment i perform a correction you can now see that the receiving section is having that two. so click on submit now the correction transaction was created and if you go on and query for it now fine you can now see that receiving section is having that two. you can search now fine you can see receiving section is having that. but in reality a supplier is only not supplied so what you have to do is we have to perform one more correction on the receiving then only the supplier will become responsible for it so when something is missing on the inventory and then you have to perform corrections at two places if it is going to be standard had it been a direct one correction is sufficient the supplier becomes responsible had it been a standard then two corrections do that had it been an inspection required receipt routing then three corrections are required for making the supplier responsible for it three corrections are required so go that one now i will not go there i will not choose this one and then i will not gain correction so two corrections are required for making the supplier responsible for it. i will not say 15 is there now supplier becomes responsible for it. the correction transaction i made it number and the receiving section i made it number now if you go on and see the 10 will now become 12 so for a direct receipt routing one correction is sufficient for making the supplier responsible for a standard receipt routing two corrections are required and then for an inspection receipt routing three times you have to perform the correction then only the supplier will now become responsible for the missing action so i have explained a lot on this now point these are all blah 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 so i have now explained it next is we are going to return the item to the supplier actually we are going to return the supplier so next act is are returning the item you know go that you want to you will not click on it return <clears throat> some companies will be having a packing facility in the inventory itself so they will now return directly from inventory itself so go that i will not go to the return receipts uh receipts and then inspect put away correct and then uh, we have to return it actually where is it here review receipts quality inspection uh, here is that the return we have a return receipt so click on the return return receipts you want to go so if a company is having a packing facility at the inventory area itself you will now go there and then query it find one person to find your tab and then click on search so we can very well what happens return it from uh, what happens in this place it's okay come on search now what does it do so we are having two things now. so from the inventory i am going to return it back to supplier three quantities now direct you want to select it and then click on return so three quantities i am returning it fine go there to whom i am going to return fine go there to supplier actually. so we can either return the receiving section or supplier also to supplier i am returning it if you have or am number if you have it now fine give it and then what is the reason for this now fine you can even populate your transaction reasons on this now fine and then put some the appropriate reason they will now come the debit come a bit there so now supplier was initially supposed to now supply 15 quantities now uh, rather uh, seven uh, 12 quantities now and now three more he has to supply it has been written back to him and written transaction is created and now go to the place so he has to do 12 now he has to give what uh, 15 now right? three has gone in now right? so now go there and then click on search search for it you know, see, the supplier has to supply sometimes if you don't have any facility for returning it directly to supply you don't have any packing facility and then the vehicle cannot come to the inventory then you return it back to the receiving section the receiving section will be having everything now go there we will now return it back to the receiving so select it i will not go there so we have 15 quantities lying in the receiving section when i return two quantities the quantity in the receiving section will not come 17 actually. select it and then click on return now we are going to return it to the receiving section so go there i will not choose the receiving <coughs> i will not return back two quantities some number then we can click on some number so the two quantities will now go into the receiving section the supplier is not responsible for it so supplier has to supply only 15 but this will now become 17 actually so we have a facility about returning back either to supplier or to receiving section depending upon how your geography is there 
if your physical uh, inventory do not have support any packing facility as well as the vehicle cannot come over here and then pick up the item to send it to supplier then you send it to the receiving section and then do it so but if you want to return back anything from this place here we can return only to supplier actually in this 17 if you want to return you can return only to supplier fine click on return fine return can be done only to supplier there is no other option available at all i will not go for one quantity or that we can now return back to supplier only in the receiving section whereas by inventory we can return it back to the receiving section or to the supplier directly you know so 17 has now become 18 now fine so uh, in up from 15 it has now become 16 actually you are not expected now it has now gone to 16 actually Go there. So now he has to supply 16. Now, click on it. now go on and make a search. Now he has to supply 16. Actually. So this is how uh, the returns happens. Now, uh, when on the purchase order, if you go on and make a search on this, now find click on it. Now go on and make a search on this. Now, uh, now everything has been written. As you now, I will not go to space. Find click on the number. <coughs> This is a standard receipt routing agent. If you go to what receipts and then go to the what's called receive expected shipments. <clears throat> so purchase order number is what 2009. Thank you on search. So it's a two-step process of what receive and deliver. Now thank you on long go to the receive now. Now uh, we are expecting what if you click on the receive expected you now show 17 or something like that. So 16. Now we can send it only receiving section, but some companies feel that what happens uh, you must have an option of what. Some of the quantities to be received directly into their shop because there's an urgent need. Because it will now be received, it will be inspected, and then afterwards, what happens? You will not do something, and then afterwards, you will not deliver it. So, you must have the option of what changing the destination type. Actually. So, that we are going to do now. So, we are going to have the option of using another. If the company wants like this, what they will do is we'll now go there, click on it. We will now go to the manager receiving parameters. Click on it. What is the search? I will not go to what? Receiving parameters. Manage receiving parameters. I will not click on it. I will not choose for the obligation. So we got only one item we want to do that. So here, allow routing override. We are eliminating it. So some companies will now allow the writing override. So we are allowing the routing override. So it is now standard receipt routing beyond the override. I click on it. Save and close. Now you go there, click on it. Now you are unable to edit it all. Okay, cancel now. Fine. So what they will do is if it is enabled, fine, go there, click on it. Now click on receive now. It will now become editable actually. Fine, it's now editable. So what they will do is first of all, they will now split the line. Fine. If you go on and show the result quantity, 16 is expected. I want one urgently. Fine, go there, click on it. Good actions, and then I will now split the line into two. Fine. I want admin. Fine. Split line is one now. Fine. Go there, click on it. So some companies will be doing this. There are eight item to come second page of fine. The remaining let it come in the normal mode. I will not change it in under. So this way we can very well do it actually. Location is not required because supplementary is there So one will be the work and then this will be going to the receiving section. It will now go to the receiving section. Or otherwise, I will not do anything about it. Or supplementary is not. So I'm not what happens receiving. Receiving will not will not be able to give this. So the 50, I will not say 10 only because I may even need some more item for after hours now. So 10 items I may not be using. One item will not go into inventory direct. So click on create result. So one, one for receiving section and then click on submit fine. A GR number will be made for both basically. So one common number for uh, delivering into the uh, 15 quantities, the 10 quantities into the receiving section and then uh, two uh, one quantity into the inventory direct. So this way we can very well override it. So if you go to this place, fine, click on the receiving parameters. So click on the receiving parameters. So it was. <clears throat> so uh, print receipt travel. So many companies will be printing the receipt travel automatically. Once when you make a gate receipt, what happens? They will be printing it actually. Fine. So there will be a, what happens along with the receipt area, fine. There will be a printer associated with fine. It will be printing it. Fine. Click on seven post. The print receipt travel is now enabled. So now, once when you make a receipt, what happens? You'll now see a concurrent will be running now. Now go to this place. Oh my God. You go to the tools now. Now go to the tools. And then here, I'll now go to the scheduled process. You will now see the print traveler will be printed on the printer actually. But uh, since I don't have a printer, what happens? The concurrent will be running on it. They will not perform a receipt function. 
They will not perform a result for the 2009. Receive expected shipments. The, mem the moment you make a gate receipt of it, now fine, it will be printed on this. 2009. We have got five more quantities to be delivered, actually. Five more quantities are fine. Let me receive one quantity. One quantity and then click on create receipt. The GRN will be created. So click on submit now. So upon gate receipt itself, the print will be happen. The print receipt traveler will be printing it now. If you go to the what's called monitor process, then see it now. The receipt traveler will be printing it actually. The print receipt traveler report is now coming. Every company will be customizing this. The technical team will be customizing it actually. They'll be having their own way of what happens, accounting for the report. And reporting will be done in a perfect manner. And then uh, it will be printed and then that will be filed also. Sometimes what happens, they will now make them two, three copies also. One will be given to the payables department like that. What happens, one will be given to the supplier himself. The lorry driver, what happens, he'll be given a report now. So likewise, you'll be having uh, multiple ways of uh, what happens, uh, monitoring this one. <laughs> The distribution will be basically done by the So if you go that you want. So Oracle's way is shabby actually, but the technical team will be doing it. Since it is a report, we can very well republish it actually. So click on republish now. Click on export to PDF. Export to PDF. So now it's coming as Oracle, it will be coming the entire child company. And then if you go down, so all the salient information which is required by the end client, what happens, everything will be printed over here. Now it's not coming something so straight, so straight. So whichever fields they, they want accordingly, they will not pick it up from the database tables. And then it must, it's not receiving only how much is remaining. So whichever is useful for you, what happens, the print traveler, the receipt traveler can be basically done by the technical team. And then that can be printed on the product. The printer will be coming. So I have got some work now, fine. I will now wind up actually, and I'm going out. So uh, we will now see on the next session on Thursday, no, and we'll now see the balance of resume on Thursday. Okay. Any doubts now? Good then, I hope that uh, the sessions are informative for you now. So bye right for now, and then we'll now meet on Thursday morning. Tomorrow is a practice day actually, and you can practice it. And then we will now meet on Thursday morning. Bye for now. Yeah, no, no. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, Nana. No, no. Okay. Thank you. Bye.